The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Mr. Murali Pillay. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to make just two short points in my speech. I start by highlighting Article 14 of the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. Under Article 14.1c of the Constitution, all citizens of Singapore have the right to form associations. However, this is not an untrammeled right. Article 14.2 specifically provides that Parliament may impose restrictions by law as it considers necessary or expedient in the interest of the security of Singapore, public order, or morality. Further, Article 14.3 allows Parliament to impose by law restrictions relating to labour or education. The Societies Act 1966 is a piece of legislation that Parliament passed to impose the restrictions contemplated in Article 14.2. We can appreciate, therefore, that the Act performs an important gatekeeping function. Indeed, in 2004, when the Act was last amended, the Honourable SMS for Home Affairs then, Associate Professor Ho Peng Kee, stated as follows in this House, and I quote, the Societies Act plays a gatekeeping role in ensuring that groups which may be used for unlawful purposes or pose a threat to public order, welfare of the good order in Singapore, or which will be contrary to our national interests, are not allowed to establish themselves in Singapore." Unquote. The operative provision is Section 4 of the Act, which vests with the Registrar the power to refuse the registration of a specified society in enumerated circumstances. This includes situations where, in the opinion of the Registrar, the specified society is likely to be used for unlawful purposes or for purposes prejudicial to public peace as contemplated in Article 14.2 of the Constitution. Safe for the enumerated circumstances is provided in Section 4.1 of the Act that the Registrar shall register the society upon certain conditions being fulfilled. The current arrangement makes good sense as it gives primacy to the constitutional right of Singaporeans to form associations safe in certain circumstances. At the same time, there's clarity on the basis upon which the registrar can reject a society's application. This was specifically acknowledged by Professor Ho in this House in the same speech. He said, and I quote, in the first instance, the registrar will have the discretion to look at applications, but his discretion is not an unfettered one. He bases his discretion on the Act itself. Section 4 of the Act sets out the premises upon which he can reject a society's application." Unquote. Under Clause 3A of the Bill, it is proposed that the Registrar is vested with a discretion instead. The word shall is proposed to be replaced with me. On the face of it, it is proposed that the Registrar is to be given a certain measure of discretion to decide whether or not to register a specified society. On the face of it, the ambit of discretion is not specifically spelled out, save that it is subject to several circumstances set out in Section 4, where the registrar has the specific power to refuse registration of specified societies. May I ask the Honourable Minister of State, how would such a proposed amendment be aligned with Article 14 of the Constitution and the purpose behind Section 4 of the Act, as spelled out by Professor Ho in this House in 2004. In a similar vein, I seek the Honourable Minister of State's explanation on the, proposed, on the proposal to vest in the Registrar the power not to register a specified society unless the rules of the society include or exclude provisions that the Registrar may direct. This is set out in Clause 3C of the Bill. Again, having regard to the constitutional provisions I've highlighted in my speech earlier, may I ask uh, what the ambit of the power would be? I understand from the Honourable MOS uh, speech that it's meant to be used where national interests are engaged. Um, but interestingly, unlike the power uh, 
when you are dealing with amendment of rules, uh, which is spelled out in Clause 8C of the Bill, uh, the grounds in respect of which the registrar may invoke an it may invoke a direction to amend the rules is absent uh, when it comes to uh, requiring the applicant to, um, to amend the rules at the point of application, before, before the society is even registered. So there's a, a dichotomy in the approach. May I ask the um, Honourable MOS whether it is contemplated that the power will always be excited exercise in conformity with Article 14 of the Constitution. Notwithstanding my comments, I support the bill.